Yes, so I was initially diagnosed with UC and sigmoid colon in September of 2019, actually on my birthday. Oh, on your, on your <laughs> birthday. <laughs> So you were in a lot of pain on your birthday and went to the hospital. They scoped you and got you diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. That was the day. 2019. And how old, what were you turning? I want to say 18, 18 and 19. You were it feels like a lifetime ago. 2019, five years ago. How old are you now? I'm 20, I'm 26. My goodness. <laughs> so you were 20, were you 21, maybe 2019? So perhaps you're going to have to do the math for me. <laughs> 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 okay, so I mean this talk about a birthday present. So you're in pain, these things are happening, you don't know why you're hurting so much, your parents don't know what's going on. You go and they say you have ulcerative colitis. And they and the doctors weren't even sure on the diagnosis, right? They were giving you different types of names to to the issue. What were some other names they were throwing out besides ulcerative colitis? Yeah, well, so the scope that I did that day, it was only it was only a partial scope. So it was only in the sigmoid colon and yeah. I I understand that that's the furthest that they saw, and so that was the diagnosis. But over time, um, I, remember I was mentioning to you, I was experiencing a lot of abdominal pain on the right side, yeah. to which my GI said, okay, so that means that the, the inflammation is not localized to the sigmoid colon. It's definitely spread upwards. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, but that was the diagnosis you see. And she was also doubting that it, was, it could have also been Crohn's. Yes. So a bit of uncertainty around the diagnosis. Because the right side could be the ileum where that's yes. where we're getting more of a Crohn's diagnosis. So, exactly. you know, you're going through this, you're a young person. Have you ever heard of these disease before? Did it run in your family? So I don't know anybody in my family with that, with that title of a diagnosis, but there are digestive problems that run through the family. And actually I've had digestive issues since I was born. So I've struggled chronically since I was a child. So I wasn't, I wasn't thrown off guard when I was given a diagnosis, but to hear the words, you have a chronic disease is something that you can't, you can't actually prepare for. You know, it was five years ago. What was your experience like? It was a little tricky because, um, I'm a holistic nutritionist and ah. big on fitness and I'm the person that everybody goes to for health advice and, and even with complex issues, I'm the person everyone goes to. Yeah. I'm the girl who would juice and like gluten free and everything. And uh -huh. so I, up until that point, have had to, like developed this identity for myself as the healthy girl who will never get sick, right? Yeah. So hearing those words, you have chronic illness, lifelong, incurable, it completely shattered my world, honestly, in good ways, in good ways also, um, because it helped me reframe a lot of my understanding around identity. But but it was very, very confusing. And so I was very resistant to the approach of taking medication. And mm -hmm. I wanted to right away, like go into healing mode. I believed and still believe the body has the capacity to heal. So, so that you, was- you knew, you, that was maybe one part of what made you successful. You always knew what you, how you wanted to achieve your goals. You had clarity 100%. and conviction from the beginning. 100%. You know, as time went on, you know, what kind of symptoms were you experiencing? You're eating clean, but what still lied? What were the symptoms? So the symptoms were blood, bloody stools, mm -hmm. uh, mucus. So extreme urgency, which was quite crippling. <laughs> and um, frequency, I've used the bathroom up to 15 times a day. And you're eating clean. And I'm eating very clean. It's like you're eating as clean as can be, and you're having 15 pounds a day, blood cramping, urgency, extreme mucus. Yes. Pain? Lots of pain, migraines constantly. Oh, one of the worst would be the mouth ulcers. I would get mouth ulcers that would be like a 20 over 10 on a pain scale. Unbearable. And you hard. were also waking up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I'm seeing constantly. you start, yeah. you were getting acne with, you're eating yeah. so clean. You're going, oh, why am I getting these acne? Is it my hormones? Joint pain too. Joint pain was severe also. Yeah. I couldn't sleep, like sleep was not restful. If I'd fall asleep, I would be aware that I was asleep. Like I would be so aware of my body throughout the night. I'd yeah. be aware of pain throughout the night. It was just not good. And you didn't have much energy. I had negative energy. 
<laughs> I had negative. <laughs> to be alive yes. was suffocating, right? It was like, <gasps> I'm, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. I would joke and say I was like experiencing energetic debt. Like I, I, I was far away <laughs> energy from somewhere, but it wasn't mine. <laughs> and you had said, okay, doc, I will use mesalamine to help try to cope, which is a 5-ASA stomach coder, lighter, very elementary medication that, but that wasn't doing the job. No. So that, so exactly. So I was refusing medication for at least a year after the diagnosis. And also I, I got that diagnosis after at least a year of pretending I wasn't experiencing symptoms. So I was, I was hiding it. Yeah. I want to bring this up. I mean, during that time too, you started seeking help from other IBD specialists, people out there who were talking about helping and stuff. And what was your experience trying some of the other protocols that you were seeing on YouTube or working with other coaching? And So after several months of trying to do it on my own, and at that point, I still hadn't taken any medication. Yeah. Um, I found somebody on Instagram who coaches one on one and I ended up signing up with him and he got me on uh, an an alternate or a, or a modified carnivore diet. And for a while, it, my symptoms are decreasing, but they weren't going away. One of the key differences between that, that approach to coaching and CCL is that um, his approach is remove as much as possible rather than add in tools to help. And so I developed that mentality as well. Remove, remove, remove. And so yeah. I did carnivore with him for a few months and then I stopped because I wasn't really seeing much of an improvement. Um, and then that's what I took on for myself. Remove, remove, remove. And then my diet became limited to less than five items. You're not the and first to tell I, me that. Like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. You were only eating five food for months and you weren't getting yes. better. Yes, I was and slight improvements, enough to be functional, but the symptoms were still there. The underlying feeling of, of illness was still there. So one of the key factors, one of the, like the holy grails of the SHIELD program is that we say, um, diet doesn't heal you. It only creates space for a healing response. Yes. So a lot of people get uh, confused with that. But I think your case is a very perfect example that you're only eating five things. You're basically fasting. You're not putting anything in your body, but it's not really calming down the inflammation. It's not resetting the microbiome as much as you want or helping the digestive problem or dealing with infection as well as you want. It can help with overgrowth, but not necessarily infection. And so you tried a few different types of Crohn's colitis programs, right? Oh, I did a lot of things. So I did the modified carnivore. Um, modified because I had included steamed carrots. That was the only other thing other than meat and chicken that I was eating. And then it gets worse. After after I stopped working with him and I decided to stop carnivore, I still had the doctors on my back. You need medication. I had my family on my back. You can't live like this. So I'm like, okay, hitting pause on everybody. I'm going to take it up a notch. <laughs> so I went 100% elemental for 55 days. And then I had to do it again. So I did elemental again for 55 days. Wow. And then I went for again. I built a lot of resilience, which I'm grateful for. And some yeah. of those spots You're a warrior. Didn't. Thank God. Like, You're a warrior. <laughs> Everyone who's listening right now is like, I'm not doing that, Julia. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> it's hard. It really oh, is hard. Very to hard. Very hard. So it did get to the point where um, I hit remission because of the elemental. I did. Okay. I, hit it, I hit remission twice. But then I would start eating again. And then a few months later, my symptoms would come back but they would come back a little bit worse than before. So then this round, this round of a flare, <laughs> I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but yeah. um, I landed back in the flare in May of 2023. And I thought, okay, no problem. I know what to do. I've done it before. Back to elemental we go. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't last on elemental for more than five days, but not just, not only was it mentally difficult this time, physically, it was like my body was rejecting it. Yeah. I had not only no energy, but I felt like I was collapsing and not to be dramatic, I really felt like I was on the verge of dying. I had yeah. nothing left in me. I couldn't lift my limbs. I'm like I'm I'm done. And this is this is why I needed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I want to and you know, a lot of testimonies I like to just roll through with your case, but you weren't so in depth. I want to give two cents when listening to your story right now. 
is when you do elemental like that, your body can actually create an intolerance to the type of protein you're having because you're having the same type of protein. It could be a whey isolate. It could be a brown rice protein isolate if you're doing Absorb Plus. You're, getting, you're probably going to get some sort of tapioca multidextrin over and over again. And your body to get that same thing, especially if leaky gut and inflammation, you could get food sensitivities that cause low energy, arthritic pain, cramping pain. You're going, what am I eating? So that's one problem of it. And then the, yeah, the exhaustion of knowing that even if you get back to symptom free only having liquids for two months straight it won't last and it doesn't solve the problem and what that does to your spirit of do it for four more weeks and you'll get your life back it yes. it will kill your spirit you're right and and that's another key thing too is that if you're not mentally in a, um, a mentality of healing um, and that is a positive you have to maintain a positive mood and um, hope Hope is a big part of it and all of all of those positive things that will get you over that hump if those things dissipate and they disappear you can be on a fast you can do the liquid diet it doesn't get you anywhere you're just yeah pure suffering year after year so you joined the shield program about five or six months ago in november in november yeah right and you came from uh canada where you had, you had to pay Canadian dollar and you had to say, okay, I'm going to make a thing. And um, I know your dad was a little, but I don't know what's different about this. You have done everything. You've trained in this yourself. What can they do different? Okay. Well, it's six months later. What are your symptoms? I don't actually have any symptoms anymore. <laughs> what? Hold the phone. But how is that possible? One of the, the biggest differences was the implementation of tools. The approach of CCL wasn't take away, take away. And this was one of the biggest things that I had to grapple with. It was kind of a fight between me and my coach, yeah. my guardian angel, Taryn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, these are the five things that I can eat. These are the five things that don't, you know, create an emergency situation for me. She's like, no, food is not the enemy we need to eat. And this is one of the biggest things we need to overcome together. Let's start adding food into your diet. I would be on the verge of hyperventilating, thinking about <laughs> things that she'd tell me to eat. Um, and I remember briefly uh, in our conversation, she mentioned something about eventually being able to eat bread. And I gasped. I thought, no, you don't know. Devil. You don't know what yeah. I have. I can't eat bread. <laughs> now I eat bread. But um, Wow. Wait, so you're eating yeah. bread. Well, first of all, let's go over. How many bound loans are you having a day? Max three. Two to three. So two, two to three. three. Normal, yeah. no blood, no cramping, no urgency, no diarrhea. None. No canker sores, acne, no craziness with acne, maybe a little bit normal, but no crazy acne. What's your energy? I'm One stable. out of 10. Energy fluctuates seven, seven to nine, depending on the sleep. Okay, normal. so normal, either a full tank or 80%, maybe eight out of 10 on average. Normal, <laughs> healthy weight, you're not underweight or malnourished in any way. No, nope, I'm good. You also, to top it off, you just got another colonoscopy. What did they say? I did. They said, actually, I love what they said. So they said I was in remission, um, <laughs> thank God. And then the GI specialist, who was my doctor, was standing um, just next to my bed and she was just looking at the colonoscopy and she said, your colon looks great. What are you doing? Wow. I mean, but that was that was a great moment. She asked oh, that's, me what I was doing. That's, yeah. that's like a, a a person with IBD's orgasm uh, dream. <laughs> like this is like the doctor comes up to you and says, you're in clinical remission. What are you doing? It looks so yes. great. Like that's yes. what we all wish our doctor would ask us. That is like, congratulations. Everyone who's listening to Julia, I'm sure you got to be like, wow, this is too good to be true. And Julia, you watched... How many testimonies of the SHIELD program before you actually thought of it and were worried and going back and forth? And how many of those testimonies seem too good to be true? Many, 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 many. <laughs> <laughs> and does it feel yes. ironic to you to now be sharing your story after someone who just watched so many testimonies and thought that's too good to be true and now you're here? But you did say something very convicted. You said, I'm going to be one of those people. Yes, I did. As I was watching the testimonies and, and my skepticism was being destroyed, thankfully. Yes. Eventually yeah. I decided to join the program and I decided that I eventually want to be on the other side of, of this, making a testimony as well. So now you have no symptoms. You just got clinical remission from a doctor who said, what the heck are you doing? Can you eat bread? I do. I do how, eat bread. How many foods can you eat? You were eating five dying. So I still choose to eat 
very clean. Of um, course, food. yeah. Of course. We don't so poison ourselves in this program. Absolutely not, absolutely not. Yeah. So I still do eat very clean and I still choose to eat very simple. My mm -hmm. preference and my appetite is towards more simple foods, but I can branch off and have things that I wasn't having before and be fine. So last night, for example, I ate South Indian food and I had no, no problem. And it was a little bit spicy, which was something I was always afraid of. So yes, I'm experimenting, branching off with the, the foods that I'm having, but so far so good, yes. Could you have gotten these results without Coach Tear? And how important was having a one-on-one -on -one coach? It was everything. I tried. I was trying stubbornly since from May of 2023 to November when I signed up, I was doing this on my own. And I was trying all the things that I thought would work for me and I was getting worse and worse. Um, and it really was only until I started one-on-one -on -one coaching that I was able to get over that hump. So it was everything. When you're really, really struggling and you already have so many things in your life that you need to tend to on top of navigating being ill, it's very, very difficult to clear-headedly um, sort your healing plan out for yourself. It's too difficult. On top of that, you're, you're well, in my case, I had to be bedridden for a little bit of periods at a time while having school on top of that, while having my assignments, while having everything. So very difficult to tend to all of those things and also figure out how I'm going to heal. <laughs> so having, yeah. And also being a specialist in, right? When Coach oh. Taryn, she's worked with tons of people with IBD. So she's bringing all that experience of just IBD to you. Exactly. Well, you're you're exactly. patient zero. Exactly. So even though you're a nutritionist, when you're healing yourself, anyone out there who's not a nutritionist, a list nutritionist is training this, do you have the reps? Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the team? Do you have the resources? Because Coach Taryn probably brought a lot of new things to your case, right? Oh, a ton, a ton, a ton. Hey, even oh. like the implementation of like Chinese herbs that I'd never heard of. They worked wonders for me. Even her, her calming and grounding presence, of she came in with so much hope that I could recover when I didn't have that hope. Yeah. That was significant. You know, what's one thing you would highlight to say that really helped you in your healing? There are two things. Um, the first, I'd say, is that you don't have to remove everything. You don't have to have like a desolate diet. It's not sustainable to live off of three to five foods for almost a year straight or for years straight. And so one of the biggest things I took out of coaching, it being presented to me that I could eat like a person. <laughs> <laughs> that was huge. And so kind of to piggyback off of that, it's not always about things that you remove, but the tools that you add in to aid. What's one tool that you said, oh one my tool? God, that helped? I have to say it's the Chinese herb. Indigo? The Chinese herbs. Mm -hmm. Yes, indigo. And I didn't, I actually even got it from a local Chinese medicine store. It cost me $8 for a two month supply. So you didn't ship it to Canada no. and pay all this shipping. No. And do all, you just said, I'm going to go find a local source yeah. of it that I know is clean yeah. and raw and it was real. Clean. And it was good. Yep. Yep. It was, it was, it worked wonders. Actually, within a few days, my bleeding stopped completely. Oh, and your dad, I know your dad was like <laughs> totally skeptical. <laughs> you know, and we're always yeah. thankful when it works yeah. out. Is your dad happy now that you joined the program? Oh, he's, Over he's just so grateful for this. He's so grateful for this. Awesome. Uh, yes. I love to hear that. And, yes. and, uh, what would you say? Anyone out there struggling with IBD, you see, if you want to live with it, one piece of advice. I'd say, do it. I'd say sign up. I'd say get help. Um, don't, don't deplete all of your energy trying to figure this out on your own. There's already a system in place or there's a pool of resources with experts, people who've gone through this, mm -hmm. um, and people who are able to guide you. Mm -hmm. So get the help, like coaching is invaluable and this program specifically is invaluable. There's nothing like it. I've tried everything.